Hello, this is Telecom TV. We are at the Wireless Global Congress here in London. I'm talking with Dong Jun Lee, who is Director, Mobile Access Network Division at Korea Telecom. Mr. Lee, pleasure to see you. Thanks for talking to us. Korea is justly famous throughout the world for being at the absolute cutting edge of uh, communications technology and being having a fantastically wired and wireless infrastructure mm -hmm. in the country. Can you tell us about 5G and what's happening in terms of 5G within South Korea right now? We have a very uh, advanced the uh, 4G network already in a global scale. Um, the, our customers are requesting more wider bandwidth in terms of their you know, services. So we already feel for the, the uh, need for the, the faster network, which we believe it is uh, 5G is all about. And uh, KT is currently trying to introduce the, the uh, world first 5G commercial network as early as first quarter of 2019, which is about five months away from now. And uh, we are actively um, working with the uh, um, infrastructure vendors as well as the, the mobile vendors to have those equipment and devices be ready in time for our schedule. When you say the first commercial deployment, what do you mean by that? Will there be ubiquitous services across the network? Will it be particularly for the enterprise or will there be consumers involved as well? We will be targeting the, the uh, end users first. Uh, the most of the uh, typical type of service will be quite similar to what we have for LTE. It's not going to be the uh, in a coverage for entire you know nation, but we start out at the uh, with the uh, some important areas like uh, major cities and other uh, key hotspot areas like the airport and uh, railroads and also some major highways. As soon as uh, the uh, we will have some confidence uh, on that the. the uh, quality of services of 5G as we you know, expanded the, our coverage, then we'll eventually have the nationwide coverage. But the exact time when we'll be able to have the nationwide coverage is not quite yet determined. Well, obviously, Korea Telecom KT has a, a 5G roadmap mm -hmm. because you're obviously quite a long way along it. Mm -hmm. How far along it are you? The first time that the, uh, we think about 5G was back in 2015. And I believe that was the first time ever for someone in the, the uh, telecom industry to mention about the 5G. It was during the, the uh, MWC 2015, our CEO, Mr. Huang, actually declared that the uh, KT will have a 5G trail service in 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympic, which happened this February. And uh, back then, we didn't have anything for 5G trial services. We didn't have equipment and devices. We didn't even have the specification for our 5G. So uh, we started out working with the, uh, some major um, vendors uh, like uh, Samsung, Ericsson, and Nokia, and also some of the uh, mobile device vendors like uh, Qualcomm and Intel. And uh, we build a uh, pre-commercial version of the 5G specification from the scratch. And uh, we ended the, uh, this specification around the, in the middle of 2016. And we have actually built the equipment based on specification last year. And then we were able to have the, the uh, pre-commercial trial services in Pyeongchang Olympics successfully based on this equipment and specifications. So you've traveled along the road on the roadmap very quickly. Yes, we did. And, uh, but I think uh, the well, KT was uh, one of the, the front runners, uh, the, uh, you know, stimulating the, the uh, industry to have the quicker access to the 5G services. And uh, initially, uh, you know, most of the, the companies were quite reluctant to have the, the you know, quicker roadmap for 5G because, well, in other parts of the world, LTE is still, in, you know, growing in terms of the uh, you know, markets and the number of subscribers. 
they were pretty reluctant, but eventually they all joined at the, uh, you know, KT's uh, the promotion for 5G. And uh, it helped the, uh, uh, basically that the 3GPP, which is, uh, you know, stipulating all the specification for 5G standard to reduce the actual, you know, schedule to come up with the, the uh, real 5G specification. So uh, I think the overall uh, reduction of the schedule in terms of the 3GPP roadmap was like uh, almost a year. So uh, we, we initially thought that, that the uh, first uh, commercial service would be possible around 2020. Now it is 2019, we are ready to have 5G commercial service. Impressive. Can we move on to talk about the role of Wi-Fi in building out 5G networks. Mm -hmm. Where are we on that? You have, we're here at the uh, Wireless Global Congress. I know that on your stand you have a demo showing. Tell us about that and then talk just to about the role of Wi-Fi in 5G as you see okay. it. KT is a foundation member of WBA. We joined at the WBA from the very first meeting. Uh, I don't know exactly, uh, date that the end year that the WBA founded. But um, the important thing is the KT is one of the, the largest carriers that have more than 100,000 access points throughout the entire network. We believe that the uh, Wi-Fi is a uh, quite important factor for us to have the uh, high quality network. And we are here demonstrating that the uh, most advanced and the most recent technology, which is called 802.11ax. This is Wi-Fi 6, as they call it. Exactly. So that's the marketing terminology from the WFA and the other parts of the uh, Wi-Fi industry. So that's Wi-Fi 6. And uh, we recently um, launched the uh, commercial service with this Wi-Fi 6 equipment in some of the, the selected the uh, Starbucks shops in Korea. and. Uh, we uh, wanted to um, expand this technology into other parts of our network, mostly you know enterprise market. By doing so, we expect that the uh, we, we we are currently um, experiencing some of the, the uh, network problems as far as that the uh, Wi-Fi is concerned, because uh, existing uh, Wi-Fi technology is a little bit prone to the interferences and the. Uh, the they also have other issues as well, but we believe that this new future of Wi-Fi 6 will be able to solve those problems that KT is currently having in our network. And uh, in association with the 5G network, uh, we believe that the uh, Wi-Fi will still be able to have some roles, even in the presence of 5G network. Well, if I reflect on the, the uh, the days when we first introduced LTE, people thought that the uh, LTE will eliminate the, the use of the Wi-Fi completely because LTE will provide a much bigger bandwidth than before. But still, that the people using Wi-Fi a lot of times, that's because of the, uh, the you know that the need for the, the higher speed and faster network from user side is also getting larger and larger. So I think that's why that the Wi-Fi uh, you know, keep you know, maintaining its status as that the uh, you know, integral part of the, the uh, good network. And it's, it's still, it, it will be continued in 5G era as well. That's my expectation. So the uh, reports of the imminent death of Wi-Fi are somewhat exaggerated. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yes. So the other um, interesting thing is that the uh, when we have the 5G network, we will need the a lot bigger bandwidth, which is uh, quite expensive, you know, resources for us. We in Korea we had at the uh, Spectre auction back in June this year. Uh, we we will pay uh, around the uh, one billion dollars for using this spectrum for like uh, seven years or so. So it's, it's a huge amount of money, right? So, uh, so utilizing Wi-Fi network, which is unlicensed band, basically you know, free of charge, 
is going to help the operators to utilize the, the, uh, our network in a cost-effective way. Fascinating. Uh, a final question to you. Um, we've talked about 5G and you mentioned good old Starbucks, of course, for Wi-Fi 6, etc. Do you have any other enterprise and or consumer use cases that you can tell us about? So that's uh, one of the questions uh, that the operators cannot easily answer these days because uh, we do not see very clear um, use case or applications for 5G network. But um, we believe that the ones we established at the uh, super fast and uh, super low latency network, which will be enabled by the 5G, then I think that the uh, right and uh, you know, proper and the application and use cases will come along. So that's my expectation. So when the, the LT was first introduced, nobody expected that the, uh, you know, the YouTube or those kind of the, the, uh, you know, video clip will be prospering, right? So in Korea, everybody's watching the, the uh, videos in subway cars and on the bus and everywhere. So people are using a lot of traffic. So um, I believe that that's uh, kind of the easiest use case we can anticipate, but at the same time, 5G will um, guarantee that the other types of use cases as well, like uh, ultra low latency type of services, and also it will eventually um, the, uh, enable the service like uh, fully autonomous driving, right? But, um, but, but maybe that's not gonna happen in like uh, two or three years, but in 10 years, it will be a reality, I think. So basically, it's if you build it, when you build it, they will come and the, the use cases will emerge yes. in the same way as it did under LTE with, with, with video. We hope so. Absolutely fascinating interview. Dong Jun Lee, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.